Hello, hello. Today I am really excited to answer a question from Loretta Hall. She asked how, to, what to do, like what do you do when toxic people enter your environment and how to handle them. And it was really beautiful that today I actually got to speak with one of my clients about a toxic person that entered into her work and how she can protect herself from that. So I have so much to say about this topic and different things that we can do both as people and also as empaths, people that feel and sense one another. So if this resonates with you, stick around. Join us at your own university. Like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. You're not gonna wanna miss a bit of this. So I think we've all been around people that just give us creepy crawlies. Maybe they like are just draining when you're around them. Maybe they're constantly complaining. Possibly they have no boundaries or self-awareness and they don't really wanna grow. All they wanna do is put on you their problems, how to, well, whatever. <laughs> That is what I'm talking about when it comes to toxic people. Sometimes we just get in a bad mood. Sometimes we need help from our friends. Sometimes we literally have had things happen in our life that are out of our circumstances and we need that support. I don't consider those people toxic. I consider people going through transition who are learning how to grow through an experience who maybe have been victimized and don't yet know how to deal with their particular victimization. Maybe it just happened. I believe that those people are growing, right? And so somebody who is toxic for the demonstration of this talk is somebody who doesn't know how to set boundaries, doesn't know how to really look on the bright side, count their blessings, who is really addicted to negative thinking and is an energy vampire, meaning that what they do is they attach to people and then they like just suck you dry. And they might overfill you at first, depending if they have a mental illness or a physical illness that goes along with their toxic attitude. Now that we're all on the same page of what a toxic person is and how they make you feel, that draining, nasty feeling, let's look at what you can do about it. So Loretta, I hope this really answers your question. And um, if it poses more questions for you, or if anyone listening to this has a question or has an episode that you'd like me to do, please go ahead and list in the comments below or send me a PM. I'd love to do an episode for you. So when you're in contact with a toxic person, there's a few things that I highly recommend. And being one, a person that lived around toxic people for a long time, and two, somebody who has been a people pleaser and a recovering codependent, I absolutely understand what not to do as well as what to do. So things not to do is don't argue <laughs> with the toxic person. Try not to engage with the toxic person's toxicity. Meaning, if they're complaining and complaining and complaining about something and it feels like it's just draining you dry, set a boundary for yourself and choose to leave the situation. It's very clear that the boundary is something that you honor for yourself and not something that you put and expected them to honor, right? So boundary is something that you honor yourself and not something you expect them to honor. That's really, really important, when, especially when dealing with toxic people or victim mentality or even survivor mentality people that are not yet fully taking responsibility for their own joy and happiness. The next thing that you can do for yourself is take full responsibility for your own joy and happiness. And what that means is really weigh out the situation. Is this person being toxic for a moment or is this a chronic behavior? How often are you around these people? Really evaluate your situation, evaluate your energy input and your energy output and, and ask yourself, is this, is this working out for me and how can I make it work out with me? So for instance, I have a client who has a person in their life <laughs> that is, is sick and quite toxic yet there is a desire to take care of this person to be a good person to help this person because the person is actually in need besides being draining so the good thing to do is set boundaries 
my advice to them is to set boundaries around the time that they spent and what they're going to do so they're not manipulated into giving more and building resentment with this person, but they still get to do what feels good for them because they're in a family or a familiar relationship with them. Another um, client of mine had an example this week that was quite beautiful that came up today, which actually had me pick this for you, Loretta. That she has somebody come into her place of work and the person is really negative and toxic and makes her feel like a little negative and toxic, right? And so instead of going into meaning, so the tip number two, instead of going into meaning about why this person is toxic and how this person is toxic and how this person could fix their life if they were only better and deciding for the person that they need to change, instead of going into all of that in your own head, don't waste your time. <laughs> Just understand and go into that acceptance of that feeling that you don't feel comfortable, that you feel drained, that you are upset or in a place of agitation when you're around this particular toxic person. And honor that truth within yourself without attaching meaning of why the person is or how the person should react or, or what the person needs. Because until the toxic person decides that they want to flip their own life around, they're not going to untoxify, whether they are toxic because of um, a particular habit, or they're toxic because a belief system, or they're toxic because they don't know better. We can't change other people, no matter what. So instead of making tons of meaning around it, just honor your feeling the feeling that you have of not being comfortable around this person, not feeling good around this person, and choose to set your boundary, like the first, but also you can do this practice that I wanna share right now. So if you've done my hugs practice before, you know how to send energy out and pull your energy back in. This is also a practice that goes along with the hugs and it's really just owning your space. So we all have a vibrational space around us and this space you're in charge of. And when you keep it up, it's good. When you get sucked down into other people's stuff or even your own circumstances and stuff, we all can get toxic and we all can get negative, right? So the first thing is to just recognize your space. So if you rub your hands together, you begin to actually bring a little bit of vibration into your space. So you can do this with me if you're not driving and you're in a safe space. And then you can kind of pull the energy apart and begin to feel how you can actually feel your energetic field. Now, this is the same field that people feel when you come around them and you feel when people come around you. This is also the part of yourself that you can really expand on. And you can play till you feel that vibration kind of subside. I feel it about here. And then when I can press it back in, I can still feel that energy. So you can kind of play with this, playing with your own field. And it's about clearing your own field. A lot of people utilize this with Reiki, energy, chakra balancing, and I'll do videos on all that eventually. <laughs> um, if you'd like one, let me know which one you want me to do first. But for this, I just want you to notice that you have this field and begin to be aware of how you're feeling. Call in the intention in your mind for you to feel really light, really good, really positive, and set your own boundary. The so one way to do it is running through your body, just kind of scan your body, noticing where you feel that toxicity, where you feel that connection with that person, whenever you feel that awareness with that person. And then with a blessing, literally like take that energy and just send it back to them with a blessing. And then clear your field. I know it sounds really funny, but literally just brushing around your field for a second is gonna help just clear that energy out and get it moving again so any stagnant energy that happened can go away. Next thing that you can do is just visualize like an egg or a shell around you. This is your auric field. This is also the boundary of where your energetic body ends and where the world begins. So go ahead and place an awareness of where you end. It could be 10 feet out, it could be five. Most people are about arm's distance above and below your body in a circular motion. People that are more toxic usually have theirs really close and they can get really close to you and then they pull back and then they get close to you and they pull back, right? So 
allow that to be. And then just take a nice deep breath and visualize any cords or any attachments that you have to anybody, just sending back to them with love and light and call all of your own awarenesses back to you. This includes happiness as well as toxicity because when you have your own stuff, you can then clear it. Then just ask light and love to come into your space, to fill your space and set your intention with your mental mind to feel good, to bless that person that has toxicity. Because you don't want to attach that meaning to it. You just want to bless them and let them be. The less entangled that you get in their drama, the better. And you can get entangled in their drama just by trying to figure out what they're feeling and what's going on. So clear your energy, set your boundary, and you can visualize like the, an eggshell up or a clear something up. I know it's intention, it kind of sounds weird if you've never done anything like this, but it works beautifully. And then stand in your own presence, holding your own light. This is much easier said than done. It takes practice. I'm still learning how to do it. I get wrapped up in wanting people to feel better or wanting things to change. and you know, it happens. We're all, <laughs> we're all subject to both being toxic and being healthy. So create your health here. Make sure that you are managing your own energy. Give them full permission to manage their own energy. <laughs> Try not to make meaning of it and set really good boundaries for yourself. So you don't take on their stuff. And if they're a really toxic situation, I advise leaving, getting help, and maybe even some support to heal within. And you can do a lot of that at your own university. So I hope this video helps. I hope it answered your question and gave you some ideas. And we'll talk to you next time.